save too. Oh, oh yeah! So this thing is awesome. If you haven't figured it out by now, this is a motorized router lift. This is the router lift part and this is the control box. I've been working on this project for a long time and I think it's finally at a state where it's sort of a usable first prototype. In this video, I'm gonna go through and show exactly how it works, what the functionality is, and at the end, I'm gonna mount it on a table and see if it works. Let's find out. I've already made two videos about this router lift. In the first one, I took the old router lift out of the table. I picked it apart to understand what was working and not working. And then I took what I learned from that and used it to design the lift part of this new lift. In the second video, I walked through the build process step by step and dealt with some of the issues that came up along the way. A router lift holds a router and goes up and down. Normally, this happens by turning a screw uh, with a screwdriver or a wrench of some sort. And this is usually precise enough for woodworkers. But if we really want to dial in the precision, digital is definitely the way to go. So I designed this to go up and down with the turn of a knob. In this case, it's a rotary encoder and it's indexed so that each click of the knob moves the router up or down by one tenth of a millimeter. Uh, for the Americans like me, that is a 256th of an inch, which is, I think, uh, precise enough for my purposes. Pushing the knob in will set the zero mark so then you can move it up or down by a little bit and you don't have to do any math if you want to go up by say one millimeter not only does it move one tick at a time but this switch here will send it all the way up to the top so you can change the bit or all the way down to the bottom so you can get it out of the way and use the table for uh, like a nap as a bonus, if you set the zero point before sending it down, you can then return to that zero position by sending it back up again and it'll stop at the zero instead of going all the way to the top. I'll save the details of the electronics for later in the video, but basically the control box is an Arduino with all the components attached to it. The inputs are the rotary encoder knob, which has a button when you push down on it, and also the go up, go down switch, and the two limit switches, which are on the back of the lift itself to tell it when to stop. The outputs are the display that reads the height and the motor that spins the lead screw to move it up and down. The Arduino isn't doing much beyond managing these things and keeping track of the current height of the router. In the last video, I put a lead screw onto the lift, um, but there wasn't enough space on it to put one of these coupling nuts so that I could drive it from the bottom. So I had to get another lead screw and put the coupling nuts on as well as the two bearings and the lead screw nut. That's the brass piece there. Um, and then in order to get that onto the lift, I needed to cut some slots into these two ledge pieces so I could slide the whole thing in. Uh, with all the pieces on it and also cut a slot into the bearing block here because that's going to be in the lift when I put the lead screw in. So I mentioned how there's gears that have to drive this thing. So there's basically a transmission and I 3D printed it. These are all the iterations I went through. These are some of the iterations I went through. Um, I worked on a lot of different ways of doing this. Um, I ended up using these herringbone gears, uh, but I tried the straight spur gears and um, 
there's different sizes of small gear that I had to work with in order to get the gear ratio that I needed in the end. That's all to say, it took a while. The stepper motor has a little green plate on top, which is just a spacer to help support it underneath this outer casing that is then screwed directly into the stepper motor uh, with some small screws. Then the small gear goes directly onto the shaft and is tightened down with a grub screw and there's a captured nut in there next to the shaft. The bigger gear has a bearing that's just press fit right into it and then that is bolted to the case. And once that's all together, the two gears can spin and there's a cap that goes onto the whole thing. And then the same bolts that hold the cap onto the base of the motor assembly are the bolts that hold the whole assembly onto the rider lift itself. Hey, I just wanted to check in. Kind of a long video and there's a lot in here. But if you've made it this far, you must be kind of interested in what I'm doing. So now would be a great time to give me a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. There's lots more interesting inventions to come. I'll dive into the electronics now. I'm putting chapters in the video, so if you don't care about this, feel free to skip ahead or, you know, stick around. You might learn something. I started off breadboarding everything together just to make sure it worked before putting it in a more permanent state. At the center of everything is this Arduino Nano. It has a good number of GPIO pins, which I need for all of the peripherals, and it's easy enough to work with on the breadboard because it has a USB port. You can plug it straight into the computer. It's running some code that just detects when the knob is turned or pushed or when the switch is flicked up or down. It decides what to do based on what inputs are coming in and it moves the motor accordingly and updates the display when it's all done moving. The reason the display doesn't update continuously when the up down switch is pushed is that the motor has to pause for 30 milliseconds every time the display updates and that looks like this. To fix this in the future, I could use a better microcontroller that has multi-threading or switch to a seven segment display. The motor that we're using is a NEMA 17 stepper motor, which is driven by a stepper motor driver, which converts some nice signals from the Arduino into the necessary voltage and current to do what the motor needs to do. These come at different power levels. And after struggling with the one I had laying around, I upgraded to a slightly bigger one. The electronics are all powered via this little barrel jack at 12 volts, and that goes straight into the stepper motor driver to run the motor. The Arduino has to run at a lower power, so I put in this nice buck converter to give me a constant five volts for all the logic level circuitry. I did all the schematics for the electronics in KiCad. Um, it's free, it works pretty well for my kind of usage. I don't really know any better, so uh, it's what I use. And once that's all set, I can start laying out a PCB. Um, printed circuit boards were like the biggest discovery in the world for hobby electronics for me, because I didn't know that for 20 bucks, you could get these great, super organized, manufactured circuit boards delivered to your house in about a week. A week is kind of a long time, especially when I went through three different iterations of this, um, but it's really worth it for me to end up with a product that's really clean and organized and not full of wires and bad soldering. So with the PCBs in hand, it's just really a matter of collecting your parts together and soldering them all on in the places they go.
When I'm making a prototype on a PCB like this, I often use a breakout board like the Arduino or the stepper motor driver. And then what I do is I just solder headers onto the board. So then I can swap out the breakout board if something goes wrong with it, like you blow up an Arduino. I'm sure there's a reason to not do this. So please leave me an angry, insulting comment if you know what that reason is. With the electronics all done, I can start putting the final touches on to mount it up on the table. I mentioned before, there's a couple of limit switches that are going on this thing. So I just have to mount those onto the case. I also had to add this extra block here to trip the limit switch on the top there. Um, this could all be integrated a little bit better into the design of the case in the end, but it works. I'm going to want to have some dust collection on here, so I'll just draw a four inch circle and cut that out with a jigsaw. And then to mount it onto the table, I made these little wings, which just mount onto the side of the housing like this and then just screw them into the sides of the housing. All right, so then I've got my level kind of spanning the hole in the table where it's gonna be mounted and then it's clamped from underneath to hold in place while I slither under the table and screw it into place. So I cut this insert plate here and I've got it held in place with a couple of levels and I'm going to slowly raise a bit up and pop it through the top of the insert plate. And there it is. Hi, how you doing buddy? So now theoretically it's ready to cut some wood. Let's see what happens. So I've got a piece of oak flooring here. I'm gonna pass it through this half inch straight cut bit. And you can see what happened there is it just chattered really bad and bit into the wood. And that's because the router's just loose in the tracks here. Uh, I spent a lot of time getting it tight in the previous video, but I think it loosened up in the mounting process. So. What I've done is taken one of the tracks off and I made a little shim here that I tested to make sure that it fits well. And I made it extra snug because I really don't want it moving. Uh, it turns out that the Vaseline in the HDPE tracks works really well to lubricate it. Um, I think knowing this will help me in my next iteration of design. But with that done, let's take it for a final spin. So that's it. I think it works really well. There are issues, as I've said, and I would love to keep working on them. Anyone who's interested in seeing what I do, let me know. I'll keep making videos. I'll keep sharing files whenever I can. And um, yeah, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.